Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the installation of our Crusader trigger in the Springfield 911 380 ACP pistol. <clears throat> I've already had a few people ask uh, which I prefer more of this, the 230A, the XSP. Uh, having handled all of them now, honestly the 911 uh, to me feels the best. It's the slimmest, uh, it comes with very slim uh, G10 grips. But also, whatever alloy they're using for the frame, is it's got a little more heft to it than a 238 or an XSP uh, or a Colt Pocket Light Mustang, um, which really, really aids in recoil and a little pistol like this. But uh, anyhow, uh, we're gonna go over tools you're gonna need. You need bench block, you need an 050 Allen wrench, one eighth inch punch, a one sixteenth inch punch, a T15 by 80 Torx wrench, a small flathead screwdriver, and your brass polymer punch. You're gonna be using polymer or punch, hammer. This isn't a punch, though you do hit things with it. Anyhow, you're gonna to wanna to use the polymer side more than the brass, so if you have a polymer and brass, you're only gonna need your polymer, all right? Uh, also, blue Loctite and or VC3. If you're using VC3, go ahead and take the post-travel screw out of your Crusader, apply it now, and pause the video for about 15-20 minutes, okay? That's how long it takes the VC3 to cure. Alright, so let's go ahead and lock and clear. We are visually and physically empty. Drop our mag. Go ahead and remove the slide. Now this is where I like to cheat and take my 1 8 inch and pop out the takedown pin and take our slide off, set it off to the side. We're not going to be using it, do, or correction, we're not going to be doing anything to it. Obviously we're going to use it later, we're going to need it. Alright, so now take your, uh, go ahead and drop the hammer, take your Torx T15, and go ahead and remove the grip screws. Yours are probably going to be tighter than what I'm showing right here, uh, having just returned this back to stock for the video. Um, but these these screws are in tight, so be careful that you don't, don't break your Torx wrench. Alright, got the grips off. And set them off to the side with our grip screws. Next, we're going to remove the safety. So it's out of our way for what we're going to be doing. Go ahead and remove the safety detent and spring, but you're going to leave the hammer pin and the hammer in. We don't have to take them out in this model. All right, we're just removing that because this little thing is not captured to this at all and you start flipping this thing back and forth you're going to lose that real quick so we'll set that off to the side we're going to take our small flat head you're going to push just like on a standard 1911 you're going to push the mag release out and you got to find your sweet spot all right once you find it and turn this thing counterclockwise like so it's going to unlock from the frame you're going to remove it all right, now, here's one thing Springfield did that I really like. Uh, it fixed a lot of things uh, we run into with the 938. <clears throat> um, and if you ever decide you want to send or do the hammer and sear uh, work yourself, which I don't suggest unless you're very familiar with how uh, this particular hammer and setup, hammer and sear setup run, um, they made all the pins go from left to right, and as you can see, this side's flat. All right, this is the sear and uh, lifter pin. This is your your uh, trigger pivot pin. And the other side's rounded, all right? So you cannot put these pins in wrong. So we're gonna flip our bench block over to the flat side. We're gonna line it up and take our 1 16th punch and our brass polymer hammer, whichever you got, knock that pin out, and the Trigger is going to pop just like that. All right, so flip back over. I'll remove the trigger and the trigger bar. All right. Now let's talk about this pin just a little bit more. All right. It's going to be hard to see, but notice the rounded end has a flare to it. Okay. 
flat end is not. So this is how you know you can only put the pin in one way. Because if you try and put the rounded end in, in first, it'll barely go in its own hole and then it stops because it's flared. And you definitely can't put it in from the right. All right, so if you go to do this and you're trying to drive the pin back in from the wrong side, you're going to screw the pin up and the frame. All right, so remember, it comes out from right to left, goes back in left to right, tapered side, always to the left. All right, so I'll set the frame over here for a second. And then we're going to take our 1 inch punch. And all you got to do is push out, keep your thumb on the bottom of the stock trigger because as soon as you take the pressure off the trigger bar the spring wants to come popping out so take push that out trigger bar is going to pop off real hard like that take our pin set it off to the side we'll drop our spring out which made a liar out of me and didn't try and pop out at all and now seems to be stuck there it goes all right, so we're going to be reusing the trigger return spring. All right, so don't worry about the spring that's in that comes with it. Uh, you're going to reuse your your stock one because the one in the 911 is a couple coils shorter. All right, they're designed slightly different. They have more void in the coil than the 938 or the Micro 9, so it makes it about three coils shorter. So. You don't want to increase your trigger pull, so you're not going to use the one that comes with it. You're going to use your stock one. All right. So now, if you're using blue Loctite, go ahead and pull your screw out. We're not going to put a lot on this because this is the, the one I installed originally, so there's already quite a buildup of Loctite in the back. But you don't need a lot anyway. All right. And put it on the screw itself. Just like that, all right. And then we'll put just a, I'm not gonna do it because as you can see, I've already got some back there. But uh, I'll dig that out and we'll go ahead and do it anyway. And then just one little dot right on the back because most of the uh, post travel screw will be sticking out back. You want more Loctite back here than up front. All right, so we're gonna put our trigger return spring, drop that right on in there. Go ahead and put in our post travel adjustment screw and have it sticking out the back. About three, four threads ought to do it. Two, three, four, somewhere in there. Wipe off your excess so we don't get a mechanical lock on the trigger when we go and install it in the frame. So now, you're going to take the trigger bar and insert it above the trigger return spring and line it up. And you're going to take the pin that came with the trigger, slide that right in place. All right. We're going to check it, make sure we're not stuck up in there. Everything's running, working exactly how it should. All right. So we're going to take our old trigger, our old trigger pin, and put them in our bag of goodies. Why do we do that? Because if you ever need to send the firearm in for uh, warranty work, say for the slide barrel, anything, you don't want to put your stock parts back in. Uh, most manufacturers will not return custom aftermarket parts. They'll return it all stock, send it back that way. All right, so now we're going to take and install the trigger and trigger bar. All right, now this here is your disconnector, just like on the 938, 238, Micro 9. They all have the same design. So if this pops out, make sure you put it back in, but there's no reason for it to come out. So unless you're flinging the frame around, you should be fine. All right, so we're going to put it in. We're going to line up, and you can cheat this a little bit if you want and use your 1 16th as a uh, dummy pin from the other side which we're probably going to go ahead and do because this is the trickiest part of all getting it all lined up and sometimes it's easier to look at it from the top because you're fighting your trigger return spring and trigger bar while you do this all right so we've got it all lined up we've got our 1 16th acting like a dummy pin 
All right, so remember, non-belled side first. So we're gonna stick that in. We're just gonna tap it in with our palm or hammer. Let your punch fall out of the way. And then finish driving it home with your polymer hammer. Don't use brass, because you're gonna mess up your frame. You're gonna leave brass marks all over it. And plus, you don't need to sit here and beat it. Just drive it home to where it's flush on both sides, and it's in. It's not going anywhere, okay? So now we're ready to reassemble, function test, and adjust our over travel. So first things first, let's go ahead and put our spring and detent back in for the safety and take our safety now in order to take the safety out or put it back in the hammer has to be straight up and down you'll find the two little notches right there on the safety they go right here and that little teardrop cut out all right we're gonna place the other side of the safety on then we're going to take our 1 8 inch punch, we're going to push in on the detent when we're pushing down on the safety. Make sure you keep, see, and that's why you got to be careful with this. That thing likes to take off. This is easier when I don't have to video it. Alright, so you're going to come straight down from, and it's in my beard. There it goes. Of course, I've done this three, four times in the past two days now that I'm doing the video for you guys. It's going to not cooperate. Push it down. And push down on the safety at the same time it'll catch boom you know, go ahead and try and cock the hammer it should not cock because the safety is in the way all right see how that is drop the safety hammer should cock all the way go ahead and make sure that the trigger is working correctly the trigger bar is moving correctly don't let the hammer slam forward uh, without the slide on just ride it all right so that's all working so we know we're good go ahead and install your mag release all right when you put that back in and you get it lined up you're going to take your flathead and turn the screw clockwise and that'll lock it in all right let's go ahead and put our grips back on now do not go above hand tight here um if you over torque these, you will crack the G10 material and uh, can damage it. Really don't want that because the grips are what keep the disconnector from being able to wobble around and uh, keep the trigger bar also lined where it's supposed to be. Okay, so definitely don't want to break our grips. Alright, so like I said, we're going to hand tighten, give them one little twist just to make sure there's no more movement. Alright, that's all together. You can go ahead and cock your hammer and push your lifter down and slide on. Now the lifter has a bad tendency on all these style pistols to want to pop up on you. So what I like to do is take my 1 8 inch punch and hold the lifter down until I get the slide on so I don't risk snapping the lifter pretty tough but eventually you slam that slide against it enough you're gonna mess something up go ahead and all right so you can see now it's time to adjust it's right at the very back you got to squeeze a little hard so what we're gonna do is you're gonna back it up just a little bit because we want the hammer falling so we can show you you're gonna turn it clockwise until the hammer does not fall Okay. Don't over squeeze. You don't want to damage the screw or your mag release, which they're both hardened steel, so it's going to be hard to do, but still. All right, so now one quarter turn counterclockwise at a time. All right, we got drop. But not complete, so we got to go one more quarter turn. So you get resist, consistent dropping of the hammer. 
All right, once you do, give it one quarter turn more and leave it. It's set. That's it. It's ready to go. All right, so now that we have the travel ready, we'll go ahead and do a functions check. Go ahead and rack the slide, put the safety on while holding the trigger. Try and pull the trigger. Once you release, you should get a reset click. Try pulling the trigger. Hammer doesn't fall. Safety off. Hammer falls. Rack the slide. Release. Reset. Hammer falls. So we've got everything back together. Um, real simple, easy instruction on the 911. Uh, I mean, they, they, Springfield knocked it out of the park on this one, guys. Um, just really knocked it out of the park. Nice and slim, fits the pocket well. Uh, be on the lookout, we'll be making holsters and do-alls for this thing. Um, and possibly some other products as well. Um, I'll be attaching the uh, fast and slow-mo uh, test firing to the end of the video so you can see exactly how fast this thing, the Crusader speeds this thing up and it makes a world of difference. Nice, crisp, solid pull. It's not too heavy it's not so light that you're like oh no just that's it that's your travel there's fall there's reset so I mean it's literally the shortest trigger on the market uh, for the 911 micro 9 and 938 238 and that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at tech, that's Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Be sure to follow us on social media here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe below. And be sure to go to the Facebook page, Instagram, video, Vimeo, not video, Vimeo, and Twitter and give us a follow. Um, be sure to go by the Facebook page or the website and sign up for the monthly newsletter. Uh, be the first to know what the monthly sale is before anybody else does. And I think that's going to be it. Uh, really a great entry into the Micro 380 1911 style market. Um, personal opinion, I think I'll be getting one. Um, that's just me. Um, and that's going to be it, guys. So as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.